All right, so for this video, I'm gonna be solving the equation x to the power of x is equal to x to the power of two. So my only variable in this equation is x, so that's what I'm gonna be solving for. And now for my solution, I'm going to rewrite this problem down here so I have a little more solving space. So my equation is x to the power of x is equal to x to the power of 2. Now the first thing I'm going to do is divide both sides by x to the power of 2. So then these two cancel out. And I get x to the power of x over x to the power of 2 is equal to 1. Now, if I have something in the form a to the power of m over a to the power of n, this is the same thing as a to the power of m minus n. So x to the power of x over x to the power of 2 is going to equal x to the power of x minus 2, which is equal to 1. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the ln, or natural log, on both sides. So I get ln of x to the power of x minus 2 is equal to ln of 1. Now the reason I did this is because logarithms have a special property where if I have something in the form ln a to the power of b, I can simply move this exponent b to the front so this is the same thing as b times ln a. So in this case, I have ln x to the power of x minus 2, and I can think of x minus 2 as b and just move it to the front. So this is the same thing as x minus 2 times ln x is equal to ln 1. So now ln1 is actually equal to 0. So I get x minus 2 times ln x is equal to 0. And now this gives me two equations. I get x minus 2 equals 0, and also ln x is equal to 0. So for x minus 2 equals 0, this is a simple equation. All I have to do is add 2 on both sides and I get x is equal to 2. So that is my solution. And now for ln x equals 0, what I'm going to do is take e to the power of both sides. So I get e to the power of ln x is equal to e to the power of 0. And the reason I did this is because e and ln x cancel out, so I'm left with x is equal to e to the power of 0, which is 1. So now to check, my equation is x to the power of x is equal to x to the power of 2. So if I plug in 2, I get 2 to the power of 2 is equal to 2 to the power of 2, meaning 4 is equal to 4. If I plug in 1, I get 1 to the power of 1 is equal to 1 to the power of 2, meaning 1 is equal to 1. So both of them are right. All right, so in this problem, I have x to the power of y minus y to the power of x is equal to 17. So to solve this problem for my solution, I'm going to first, let me rewrite uh, the equation right here. Now to start, just by looking at this equation, what can we infer? Well. Notice how we have x to the power of y minus something is equal to 17. And 17 is greater than 0, right? Meaning x to the power of y is greater than y to the power of x. And this also must mean that x is greater than y and y is greater than 0. 
So now that we know this, I'm going to rewrite my equation here, x to the power of y minus y to the power of x is equal to 17. And x to the power of y, I can rewrite this as x to the power of y to the power of 2 over 2. Because 2 over 2 is the same thing as 1. And x to the power of y to the power of 1 is the same thing as x to the power of y. Now this, I can rewrite as x to the power of y over 2 to the power of 2. Because if I have something in the form a to the power of m to the power of n, this is the same thing as a to the power of m times n. So I can switch these up. Now, y to the power of x, I can also change this up as well. So y to the power of x, I can rewrite that as y to the power of x to the power of 2 over 2. And this, I can rewrite as y to the power of x over 2 to the power of 2. Now from here, remember my original equation was x to the power of y minus y to the power of x equals 17. Now I can replace x to the power of y with x to the power of y over 2 to the power of 2, and y to the power of x with y to the power of x over 2 to the power of 2. So now I get x to the power of y over 2 to the power of 2 minus y to the power of x over 2 to the power of 2 is equal to 17. Now I'm going to let x to the power of y over 2 equal to the variable a and y to the power of x over 2 equal to the variable b. So now if I substitute in a for x to the power of y over 2 and b for y to the power of x over 2, I get a squared minus b squared is equal to 17. Now if I have something in the form x squared minus y squared, this is equal to x plus y times x minus y. So a squared minus b squared, that's going to equal a plus b times a minus b is equal to 17. Now the only factors of 17 are 1 and 17, meaning that one of these two has to be 17 and the other one has to be 1. So just by looking at this, we can tell that a plus b is going to be 17 and a minus b is going to be 1 because a plus b is greater than a minus b, meaning a I have two equations, a plus b equals 17, and a minus b, b is equal to 1. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add these two equations together. a plus a is 2a, b minus b is 0, so these two cancel out, and 17 plus 1 is 18. So I get 2 equals 18, and if I divide both sides by 2, I get a is equal to 9. Now I can plug back in a for 9 into my original equation. So let's we could just do either one. I'm going to do a plus b equals 17. If I plug in a for 9, I get 9 plus b equals 17, meaning b is equal to 8. So a equals 9, b equals 8. And we can even check it over here. Let's plug both of these in. a is 9 minus b is 8, and 9 plus 8 does equal 1. So now that we know a is 9 and b equals 8, We can go back here and notice how we let x to the power of y over 2 equal a and y to the power of x over 2 equal b, meaning x to the power of y over 2 is equal to 9 and y to the power of x over 2 is equal to 8. So to solve this, let's first start by solving the first equation. So x to the power of y over 2 equals 9. I can first start by taking the power of 2 on both sides. So then these two cancel out, and I get x to the power of y is equal to 81. Now 81, I can rewrite that as 3 to the power of 4.
Now I'm going to do the same thing to y to the power of x over 2. I'm going to take the power of 2 on both sides. And then these two cancel out, so I get y to the power of x is equal to 64. Now 64, I can rewrite that as 4 to the power of 3. So I have x to the power of y equals 3 to the power of 4, and y to the power of x equals 4 to the power of 3. Well, what does that mean? Well, y, 4, x, 3, and over here, y, 4, x, 3, meaning x is equal to 3 and y is equal to 4. So this is my solution to this equation.